Uh, first of all, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to say some things about Somalia. I came to England uh, as the son of a seaman 61 years ago. Uh, I, uh, however, I am a passionate Somali lander. I see nothing wrong with Somalia. I can't see all the negatives, I only see the positives. If you were to put the ugliest woman in Hargeisa in front of me, I would only see the beautiful things about her and not the other things about her. Um, so anybody expecting any objectivity from me is going to be sadly mistaken. I'm totally a subjective and very partial. Uh, and, and, and that's, I suppose, how it should be. One of the things that I do uh, is to try and encourage businessmen in this country to go to Somaliland or to invest in Somaliland. And over the last 15 or 16 years while I've been doing that, a lot has changed. In the early days, people thought I was mad uh, because of course they didn't know the difference between Somalia and Somaliland. And, uh, and although I'm not bad at selling things, I found it very difficult to sell Somaliland. So what I realized I had to do was to stop selling it and try to encourage people to go there. And of course, the difference between the perception and the reality is very wide. Um, and, and really, the power of somebody actually who starts off very skeptical as a businessman, going there and seeing for himself or herself what is actually there, is quite remarkable. And I'll tell you, give you a very good example. Uh, many years ago, a friend of mine who's a very high part high-powered, high-profile, private equity uh, person, uh, one day, just in a whim, said, okay, you, you're trying to sell me this place, let's go there. So he came with me, we went to, this was the days when you couldn't go directly from here to Addis and then Addis to, to Hargeisa effortlessly. You couldn't do that, which you can today. It's very easy to, to, to get to Hargeisa. But in those days, it was a trip. Uh, we ended up in Hargeisa. Uh, I, I, I took him pretty much everywhere. We went by road all the way to uh, Anigabo, which is a truck. You just go like this uh, for many, many hours. Uh, we ended up going to Dalo, which is one of the wonders of the world. There are very few Somalis who have been to Dalo, let alone an Englishman. You've been. You know. It, you've been. Exactly. So you know how beautiful that place is. But, um, so I took him all the way down to Maine and he's, he saw the beautiful clear waters. He dived into the water, uh, snorkeled, and came back up and said, I've been to every reef pretty much in the world. There is none that is as pure and as clean as though God had just lifted his hand from that reef. What we have, we don't know. So, uh, anyway, he came back and was very evangelical. Anybody, he became a Somaliland boy. Anybody that wanted to, you, you know, he would just tell everybody. Six or nine months later, I was sitting at a very smart dinner party and I sat next to a woman I had never met before. She found out that I was from Somaliland. She started telling me everything that I'd been telling this guy for the last 20 years. And so, not only he became an advocate for Somaliland, but she became an and she'd never been there. So the power of one is very, very powerful. And uh, what I say to people is, don't listen to me, I'm totally subjective. I'm in love with this beautiful woman. Don't rely on what I say, go and see for yourself. Because I'm certain that anybody who, who goes there and sees for himself what the opportunities are, uh, and, and, and how receptive the people are to change, how flexible they are, and how much they want their country to, to develop, you will be amazed and you will be encouraged to, to look at opportunities. In terms of as speaking, as, even though I'm subjective, I'm also somebody that spent, invested quite a bit of money, more than I'd like to admit, in Somaliland. I've had some good experiences, I've had some bad experiences. But those experiences are no different from investing anywhere else, let me tell you. Making money, honestly, is very difficult. 
and it's difficult everywhere in the world. Somaliland is not exceptional. In fact, I'd go so far as to say it's one of the easiest places in Africa to do business. Um, and it's the perception problems that we have, not the reality. What does Somaliland have? We've, we've heard this morning that it has peace, and that's obviously a very firm foundation for any business environment. Without it, you can't do any business effectively. But peace in itself is nothing more than the foundation for the house. What you need is uh, the people of Somaliland are very receptive to investors coming in, very receptive to the idea of working. The work ethic isn't as sophisticated and as efficient as, as, as say, in the UK. But we shouldn't judge Somaliland by UK standards. We should judge it by African standards. And by African standards, the people in Somaliland are way ahead of the game. Even the biggest Na'as in Hargeisa is smarter than most people that you're likely to meet. <laughs> um, so one of the biggest assets that Somaliland has is its people, particularly the young people. Uh, I, I'm often amazed at the ingenuity, the smartness, the, the, how much these young people know and how frustrated they are by the, the lack of uh, op opportunities. But things, I think, are going to change. So what I say to Western investors, Somaliland is the hidden gem of East Africa. We have everything. You know, many years ago, I took a, a geologist team to Somaliland at a time when I really didn't know much about what the country had. Um, a South African group, actually, from the University of Wits. Um, and <clears throat> I think they were amazed, as much as I was, uh, at what the resource potential of Somaliland is. We pretty much have every raw material known to mankind, probably other than diamonds. We probably don't have diamonds, but we don't need them. We have every real, raw, rare earth. We have every resource, including human beings in Somaliland. What we lack is capital, obviously. But certainly the resources are there. And about 15 years ago, I embarked on this mad, crazy, Don Quixote type crusade to find oil in Somaliland. So 15 years ago, uh, I, I started that, 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 that silly business. It's very costly. It's like an expensive white or expensive business. You have to keep on investing to get the benefit out of it. Um, I'm pleased to say that in that 15 year period, I learned a lot about Somali people. I learned a lot about how Somaliland actually works as opposed to how we fish and chips English Somalis believe it works. Uh, I, I've got my hands dirty. By the way, I'm the original English fish and chips Somali. Um, but I, I've really come to understand uh, how Somaliland from an investment perspective really looks. And in that time, much has changed. And, and, and the single biggest change is the way in which uh, serious financiers are now prepared to look at Somaliland very seriously. I can tell you, give you a very brief example. Um, I knew a few people who worked in the oil industry, many of whom worked in BP, who, who are in the next uh, office to me, and, and I thought it would be a very simple thing to sit down in front of one of the people there and really convince them that, that quite apart from a geological perspective, that Somaliland was the same place to do business with. BP would not even, in 2003 or four, they wouldn't even allow me into their office, even though they were individually and personally they were very happy to see me um, in, in a restaurant or whatever. They were so scared of dealing with Somaliland that they wouldn't even officially answer my emails. They'd pick up the phone, but they wouldn't answer my emails. And when I asked one of my friends why he wouldn't answer, he said, well, that's tacit, that's almost tacit recognition of Somaliland. So we've gone from that situation where, where serious institutions were not prepared because of the whole political business of, of recognition in Somalia and Somaliland. We've gone from that situation to a situation today where my co-partners in the uh, exploration license that we are 
uh, undertaking in Somaliland, where hundreds of millions of dollars are going to be invested in Somaliland over the next five years. We've gone to the situation where two public companies are um, investing that kind of money in Somaliland. So we have made progress and we shouldn't underestimate the, the advances that Somaliland has made over the last 10 to 15 years. Um, the resources are plentiful, the people are very positive. Uh, Somaliland has a great future. I think that these elections that, are, that, that people have been talking about are an interesting and very important turning point. I'm quite certain that, that it will work well for Somaliland because, of course, the secret source of Somaliland, the reason why it works, despite the, 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 all the reasons why it shouldn't, is because the democracy and everything else that is positive there comes from the bottom up, not, it's not imposed from the top down. And if the politicians, if the politicians don't behave, the people will make sure that they do. So I'm very optimistic about Somaliland. Uh, I see only the beauty of it, but also uh, I think, you know, what I say to investors or potential investors, please go and look. Don't trust me. Go and see for yourself.